Anna is a new film directed by Luc Besson and is about a young Russian girl who is plucked out of poverty and abusive relationship by the KGB so she can be turned into an assassin. Because of her looks, she's sent to become a model in Paris, which works as a cover so she can meet potential targets. If you're familiar with the films of Luc Besson and even the films that he produced and didn't direct, you probably think this sounds familiar. I'm watching the trailer for this. I felt like, seriously? Again? And not only because it's been done before by this director, but it's not an uncommon story. And the one it reminded me the most of was Red Sparrow with Jennifer Lawrence that came out last year. And that film wasn't great. I also thought that the lead actress was too skinny. Not in a... Uh, that's an attractive way, but more that I thought that watching her beat up fully grown men would take me out of the film because she's not like a supermodel or a fitness model or just a really attractive normally built woman. She's like a runway model and this is her first real acting role so that didn't bode well either. She also has a very otherworldly sort of face. I can imagine her as a background elf in Lord of the Rings or maybe an alien on Star Trek, so I didn't think she'd work as the lead in this. But the film also has actors that I like, Killian Murphy, Luke Evans and Helen Mirren are here, so it might be worth a watch. So with all that said, I was surprised. I actually enjoyed it a lot and there's nothing really new here other than the angle of her being a model and the plot, but it was handled well and I was entertained. Despite my worries, the lead actress, whose name is Sasha Luss, was pretty good too. I cared about her character and I liked her personality, which is weird because she has to play an icy demeanor a lot, but it's not all the time, so you do sympathize with her. She's much more likable than Jennifer Lawrence is, seriously. I've seen like I think two films where I cared at all about a character Jennifer Lawrence was playing. They have her saying these kind of one-liners and badass lines that didn't have me rolling my eyes. She was cool. And women in these types of roles are rarely cool. I watched Atomic Blonde last night for the first time and holy shit what a weak film. Charlize Theron is so fucking boring and one note the whole way through. That's why James McAvoy walks away with the whole film and has me wishing I could see a movie about just his character. There's a bit of that here with Killian Murphy's CIA character. He's just a lot of fun. And he has this very faux casual way of talking during intense moments that I really like. I wouldn't have thought of him working in a role like this, but he's great and I kind of wish there was more story devoted to him and our lead, but it would have been a different film. If you saw the trailer for this, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this is an action film. There are two action scenes and they are very good but that's two in a two hour long film. It's more of a spy film or an assassin film, like Red Sparrow. Its plot points are all about changing loyalties and twists and reveals and power plays between all the characters. It's a thriller, but there are two action scenes and they're very well executed. Everything I was saying about her being too skinny for me to believe that she's actually hurting anyone was still a little bit true. While I was watching, I was looking for moments where she might maybe throw a punch and hit a guy in the chest and he'd go down immediately or something like that, but it didn't really happen. There's lots of her using items from the environment like plates and poles and other makeshift weapons. They have her moving so fast that the guys can rarely land punches. The sound effects and the editing and the cinematography bring together fun to watch coherent fight scenes that made me believe that she could do it for real and that's impressive to me. In the second action scene she has to escape from somewhere and it was really tense. All these different obstacles keep popping up and the stakes are really clear and strong so I was shifting my seat a bit from anxiousness. There are two scenes I love. One where she's in the middle of a photo shoot and she has to be somewhere but the photographer's being annoying and then she snaps, I won't say exactly what she does but it's really really cool. And there's a bit where a guy has to get his finger cut off that somehow was really funny. There are some really beautiful shots as well but they don't really fit in with the fast paced nature of the film and they never really get to sink in. It has an unusual structure, the narrative is a bit all over the place. A lot of the film is it'll go along for a while and then something shocking will happen and then it'll cut to two years earlier, three days earlier and then continue for a while filling in the blanks until it reaches the point where the shocking thing happened. I didn't mind it being told this way, I think if it had all just played out in a linear structure it would have been much less interesting and would have felt more like a bunch of films that came before. It could be a bit confusing at the beginning because there's some talk about how much time she's required to do these things. Then we jump backward and forward in time and it's not clear how long she's been doing these things at this new point in the story. By the end of the film I wasn't sure how long she'd be working for the KGB or had been working as a model or how much time had passed in total. This structure lends itself well to this film because there are a lot of twists but it's also really obvious when they're trying to trick the audience and hide certain things and the moments and actions of background characters that it'll come back to later to present in a different light. I was also able to guess close enough what it was they were hiding each time they did it. It's not clear after a while why she's a model in this. She becomes a model so she can get close to a target who's a partner in the modeling agency she works for. But once he's dead, she just keeps working there, even though she hates it. 
I think it's just the cover identity the KGB wanted her to have, but it's not made clear. She also has a girlfriend who she uses as part of her cover, who she keeps for ages too. I didn't like the girlfriend character. She seems like an important plot point because she's in the film a good bit, but she's not really a character. And she's always annoyingly happy, even when it's clear that Anna is just sick of her. It's unpleasant and it doesn't lead to anything. The technology is iffy given the time period. It's set in the late 80s before the fall of the Soviet Union but I'm pretty sure I saw a thumb drive. There's also a machine that copies the contents of a briefcase just by getting close enough to it. I assume that the contents was an electronic device of some kind because otherwise it's even more impossible. And it does all this without opening the briefcase or anything like that, just by being close to it. This is supposed to be a realistic movie and these you know, futuristic for the time period gadgets just come out of nowhere. There's one scene I really like. Throughout the whole film, they keep making this big deal about how Anna can play chess. And she's amazing at chess. And then when Helen Mirren, who's in charge of Anna's training at the KGB, is told about her amazing chess playing abilities, she's just like, why do I give a fuck if she can play chess? Who, who gives a fuck? Why does that matter? It was really funny to me because I'd gotten tired of films using chess as a shorthand for someone who thinks strategically. You don't have to be great at chess to think ahead and have backup plans, people. I would have liked to have seen more of her training because we actually don't really get to see any of it. And I also think that the film could have used a bit more sex. It just felt weird that you have this very violent adult themed film about assassins and seduction in the model world and the sex aspect of it isn't explicit at all. I don't want porn or anything, but I would have liked more given the subject matter and how much it's implied. I liked how it's able to be about Anna being caught in the middle of these two powers, the CIA and the KGB, the Russians and the Americans, and the representatives of these two powers are played by men, Murphy and Luke Evans, because in real life that would probably be the case during that time, but they don't make it a gender thing. You can read it as being about that if you're so inclined, but it's not explicit because it doesn't need to be, and it would have hurt the film if it was. It seems to be saying that the Americans and the Russians are both bad in how they use people, but the American side, represented by Killian Murphy, never really does anything bad. I suspected that it was going to turn out that he wasn't being genuine and he was lying about this and that, but it doesn't really happen. Then the end of the film treats his character as if he was treating Anna as bad as the Russians were, even though Murphy seemed to genuinely care. It made the ending a bit confusing, and I thought it could have used one more scene so it could have been a slightly more happy and satisfying ending. I'm going to give Anna a B plus. It was unoriginal, but it was still entertaining. I went in being very sensitive to ridiculousness, but I was completely engrossed in the story for the full two hours, and I definitely recommend it. Besson's last two films had more ambition and impressive visuals, but this one had a story that worked, characters that I liked, and fight scenes that were as good as anything in the John Wick films. Also, Lucy is a boring fucking movie with a bullshit premise and an invulnerable hero, which is a terrible thing to have in an action film. Thank you very much for watching my review. Please like, subscribe, it helps me out, it helps the channel grow. Follow me on Twitter at Look to the Movies. Comment down below, let me know if you've seen Anna, what you thought of it, if you liked it, disliked it, if you agree or disagree with any of my points, if you have any points of your own. Also, let me know what's your favourite Luke Besson film. I'll be back soon with more reviews and I'll see you then.